Hello everyone, I welcome you to CEC lecture series. I am Nupur Chavla, teaching English literature at Maitri College, Delhi University. And today's lecture is part of the ongoing series where uh, we are discussing about the short story. So, uh, in different lectures, uh, you know, uh, various experts have been picking up, uh, you know, uh, stories uh, uh, on, uh, you know, various topics uh, written by different uh, authors at different points of times. Uh, so, likewise, even uh, today's lecture is about uh, one such writer who has written this very, um, uh, you know, uh, popular uh, short story collection called uh, Cosmic Comics and the author is called Italo Calvino. So, today's lecture is titled Italo Calvino, Cosmic Comics 1965. So, let us first of all understand uh, a bit about the author. Right now, as the, uh, as the name itself, you would be able to uh, figure uh, that it is an Italian name. So, Italo Calvino uh, was an Italian writer and also a journalist. Uh, he's, uh, well, he was born in 1923 and was around until 1985. So, which means that he was primarily a 20th century writer. Right? And he is famous for uh, choosing genres as uh, radical alternatives to the realist narratives. Uh, before, uh, you know, uh, coming to uh, his writing style, we need to understand that, you know, here is a, uh, here is an Italian writer uh, whose works then were of course originally written in Italian, but because they were so popular, they were also translated into English, right? And uh, therefore, his texts become uh, as much, you know, uh, important for the English reading, uh, uh, I would say, uh, group as well. And, uh, uh, you know, when we look at his um, uh, writing style, uh, he is, uh, he was, he has always been famous for choosing genres as radical alternatives to the realist narratives. Now, you see, uh, this is two different style of writing. So, one is, of course, the realist narrative. So, which are, you know, kind of closer to reality, which are relatable and uh, narratives which, uh, you know, kind of uh, in which emerges a perspective on reality. What is going on? Um, what are the gaps in reality? What are the potentialities, uh, you know, in a given society at a particular point of time in history? All these things are, uh, you know, uh, traceable in a realist narrative. Uh, so, one can say that it is, you know, uh, closer to reality in that sense, it is also very uh, relatable. But what Calvino does is that he breaks away from this. And these radical alternatives that he offers in his writing actually then comes to define his very writing style as well. Right? And if we uh, notice that, you know, he was writing around, uh, I mean, he, he started writing in the 1940s. So, which is a time when the world was witnessing a war, which is what? The Second World War, right? So, in the middle of that, uh, Calvino was writing. And of course, in just a while, we will see that, uh, you know, how uh, that uh, context also uh, had some kind of an impact on um, his fiction as well. So, you see, if we uh, look at his uh, works, his uh, texts of fiction, uh, in the 1950s, he wrote uh, the historical fantasy uh, texts and they are all collected in this collection called as The Ancestors, which was uh, published in 1960, right? So, historical fantasy would mean what? That the uh, the characters or the events would be taken from history, but of course, uh, you know, some element of uh, fantasy would be added to that in order to, uh, you know, portray uh, the particular character or the historical event. Um, then, the uh, another, uh, you know, kind of strain that we notice in uh, Calvino's works is the metafictional experiments, right? So, and these are evident in the collection uh, Invisible Cities, which was published in 1972, and another text which is titled If on a Winter's Night Traveler, published in 1979. Now, what do we mean by metafictional experiments? So, you see, uh, we have already looked at, uh, you know, kind of three ways of uh, writing. One is the realist narrative. Second is the, uh, I mean, you know, like the, the realist narrative, which becomes the point of departure for uh, Calvino. Then uh, from there, 
he departs to do what he departs to write first a, a, a historical fantasy second he we also notice in his uh, uh, you know works meta fictional experiments which means what now you see meta the word meta means beyond so we notice that in his works there are meta fictional elements as well there are those elements which go beyond uh, you know uh, the realm of fiction right so we see these elements also um, enter calvino's works in around the 1970s so these two uh, i would say um, methods were uh, adopted by calvino in his uh, 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 experiment or one can say in his break away from the realist uh, form of writing now after that you know um, we need to particularly focus on uh, the collection which is uh, in discussion today that is the cosmic comic stories now the cosmic comics is actually a uh, name of the collection which has about 12 stories as part of the collection and it was written by calvino in uh, 1963 and 64 right and it was published in italian in 1965 and the english version then came in 1968 so he began to write the cosmic comic stories in 1963 and 64 and this collection of 12 stories then was published in italian in 1965 and the english version came in 1968 now you see um we will of course talk at length about cosmic comics in just a while but this is just to help you locate uh, this text within the larger rubric of uh, you know uh, the works that he had otherwise written now we had mentioned just a while ago that you know when uh, calvino was writing it was the time of the second world war so during the second world war which is 1935 to 1949 he was a university student and he read quite a few anti fascist works so this definitely you know the kind of reading that he did in his formative years gives us a sense of uh, you know uh, what would be the color of his thoughts what would be the tenor of his uh, ideology so he read those works that were anti fascist back in the day at the time of the world war um and we also saw that you know the horrors of the war actually provided the raw material for his various literary ambitions now how did that happen uh the foremost is that it deepened his commitment to the communist cause right he became he even became a member of the um, italian communist party in fact uh, this collection of stories uh, which is titled the crow comes last is a collection which is based on his war time experiences and it was published to a claim in 1949 and his first novel was title the paths to the nest of spiders which was published in 1945 so 1945 comes his first novel next work of fiction is a collection of short stories which is the crow comes last in 1949 that is a direct reflection of his wartime experiences so what we notice is that this kind of a i would say political training or this kind of a um you know understanding of uh, war and life during war also somewhere becomes part of um uh, calvino's um uh, you know uh, creative universe one can say so uh, by and large uh, that's what we see about his uh, biological and literary background now on your screens you can see uh, that is um, uh, you know uh, calvino and uh, we notice uh, that to, to the right uh, is the cover of the book which is in discussion today that is the complete cosmic comics right uh, as the cover itself you can see that it has a sense of um, a fantasy and imagination uh, the moon is a dark red oh sorry uh, uh, i mean it could very well be a sun or the moon one is unable to uh, you know be sure of that it is dark red um it has features right Uh, and of course in the background is this uh, uh, green cover but what we notice then that this cover uh, of the uh, book itself indicates 
uh, the very uh, basis of uh, this text which is what fiction right fiction and uh, still more importantly uh, it is um, really really pronounced in imagination and as the title itself suggests cosmic comics right the word cosmic is uh, you know kind of uh, reminds us of the word cosmos means the universe the galaxy and beyond right uh, and comics of course uh, you know uh, is a word which uh, brings to mind what a sense of um, comedy a sense of wit right so we see that these two uh, the cosmos and uh, you know wit become very important to this text uh, composed by uh, calvino now if we uh, look uh, briefly at the text overall uh, we will then be able to appreciate you know uh, how uh, uh, or you know uh, where does this particular text fit into the larger rubric of his uh, other uh, works or his other experiments with realist fiction and thereafter we are going to discuss one story from this text of 12 short stories right and that story uh, i will i mean we will we will come to it once we have had an overview about what exactly is calvino doing in cosmic comics so as we said that he began writing the cosmic comic stories in 1963 and 64 and it's a collection of 12 stories published in italian in 1965 and the english version in 1968 now you see in this collection uh, he invents a new genre again what we've been talking about right that there is a sense of experiment that is central to his style of writing so each tale begins with a statement of a scientific hypothesis now what is this new genre that he is developing this is how it uh, you know comes about so each tale in the text or each uh, story in the text begins with a statement of a scientific hypothesis usually about the cosmos and then it is followed by a first person narrative of the protagonist whose name is qfwfq now i know that this uh, name is not pronounceable and that in itself uh, you know kind of inaugurates or introduces uh, what calvino is trying to do he is trying to do that which has not been done before right um one can say to an extent that this also falls in line with the um with the sense of um, experimentation with a sense of uh, you know uh, uh, one can say um the very style of writing that emerged in the 60s in uh, england as well so therefore uh, england and uh, italy both being uh, european uh, nations one can say that uh, some amount of uh, overlap is noticeable here because uh, you know uh, of course while the two are not comparable while samuel beckett's play um, and his style of writing also uh, has this sense of um, you know somewhat uh, the abstract the absurd as they say but uh, while, while calvino is not associated with absurdity but we definitely see that that sense of experimentation and the unconventional Uh, that meets us here and uh, let's not forget that uh, beckett and luigi pirandello uh, both these major playwrights were uh, uh, were some of the uh, literary influences of calvino anyway coming back so the new genre that uh, you know kind of um, he invents for this collection um, is structured thus that every story will begin with a statement of a, a scientific hypothesis so that statement you know sounds like um you know somebody is presenting a hypothesis uh, which is of course scientific in nature before beginning a study right so it's it's uh, it's usually a two to three sentence italicized uh, you know a hypothesis which is mentioned right at the top of the story and then uh, you know uh, it is followed by a first person narrative of the protagonist now the protagonist remains the same throughout the 12 short story collections and with not many characters right so it is i would say uh, the stories that he writes they are not stories as we would know in conventional sense there are not many characters 
and they're all situated in the cosmos or connected with the context of the cosmos. So those narratives or stories that we are, uh, you know, kind of usually aware of, that there are situations, there are characters, there are uh, locales, there are these different places, all of that uh, somewhat remains muted in his uh, fiction. But instead, what comes forth is a very different kind of a narrative. Now, what this different narrative is, of course, we'll discuss at length when we discuss this short story from the collection, right? But for us, uh, right now, we say that he invents a uh, new genre in cosmic comics. Now, you see, if we uh, uh, place this in the larger context of his writings, so from 1943 to 63, Calvino alternated between realism and historical fantasy. So he also himself wrote texts of realism and a few of them were historical fantasy. This was between the decades 43 to 63. Now Cosmic Comics in 1965 inaugurated a more experimental writing phase. So one can say that this uh, short story collection then um, uh, you know uh, becomes one of the markers of this new phase of writing uh, by Calvino which was a lot more experimental. So we see that how this author then is uh, quite versatile who keeps experimenting with different forms of writing, with different ways of expression. Now you might wonder that what is it that would have you know inspired him to do this? Was there something in the reality itself that he was living at that time which was Europe in the 60s that maybe compelled him to experiment with modes of expression? Is it that the existing modes were not feeling adequate enough? Is it that the reality was too, uh, one can say, loaded at that point of time that it required that it, or that it called for different ways of expressing it? Now, you see, these are some of the questions that you must ask when you are, uh, you know, approaching a particular author. Now, coming back, uh, we notice that in this uh, uh, experiment with the genre, he uses science as an inspiration to move away from realist fiction. Now, you might ask, why just science? He could have used any other, uh, you know, uh, mode or method as an inspiration to, uh, or, or as an uh, alternative to realist fiction. Again, the answer to an extent also lies in what was going on uh, you know, in the world at that point of time. So when he started writing Cosmic Comics, um, uh, which was in you know, 1963, this coincided with uh, you know, kind of uh, technological advancement around the world. And Calvino wanted it that, uh, you know, I mean, he, he wanted literature to keep pace with it. So from 1963 to 65, they were also the years when the space race between the US and the Soviet Union was at its peak. So at that point of time, so wh what do we mean by space race? It means that both these countries, US and the Soviet Union, they were trying to send, uh, you know, uh, space missions. So the space, the cosmos, um, the galaxy, the universe, all these uh, were words that were, uh, you know, kind of uh, very much present in the atmosphere at that point of time. So one assumes that this could be one of the reasons why, uh, you know, um, he uh, starts to write about uh, or, or, or he starts to take science as an inspiration for experimenting with realist fiction, right? And we see that uh, experiment in the current collection, Cosmic Comics. The next thing that we also say, and quite interestingly, is that you know whenever we think of science as uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the I would say um, uh, you know uh, inspirations for a given uh, author, what comes to your head? Maybe that text belongs to uh, science fiction, the genre of science fiction, right? But that is not exactly the case with Cosmic Comics. Why? Let's look at this. 
Now you see science fiction dealt with a dystopian future with human protagonists pitted against other forces and creatures. Right? These are the two I would say uh, most fundamental features of uh, science fiction. There is a dystopian future that uh, the uh, writer presents right? and the human protagonists are pitted against other forces or other creatures that are non-human and forces which are not, uh, you know, uh, which do not belong to the earth. And usually the sense is to talk about how if we continue in the current ways, it can lead to a future which is unpalatable. So that's why a dystopian future. That's generally speaking the tenor of a text of science fiction. But his, comic com his uh, cosmic comic tales were set in the remote past at the dawn of the universe with a protagonist QFWFQ who's not always a human. So that's why we notice that cosmic comics cannot even be called as a text of science fiction. It does not, uh, you know, uh, subscribe to those conventions as well. It's not set in the future. In fact, it is set in the remote past. Now, what remote past is it? It is that point of time when the universe just came into being, when the world was coming into being, when galaxies were coming into being. That is how far back in time Calvino's imagination goes in this short story collection. As it's written over here, at the dawn of the universe, right, when everything was just in a very nascent form. And even the protagonist was not human. That's why the name QFW FQ, which is nothing but a very abstract word, right? Um, one, can, one can say multiple things about the choice of this name for the protagonist as well. Maybe language at that time, um, you know, was not so developed and, and that's a sense that, um, uh, uh, you know, Calvino wants to give, that he's talking about such a time when there was uh, no sense of, uh, maybe one can say, meaning as we know it today. There was no sense of vocabulary as we know it today. There was no sense of language as we know it today. There were no sense, I mean, uh, there was no structures uh, as we know it, uh, as, as we know them today. So one can say that there was no system of signification uh, that could be used to, uh, you know, uh, name such a protagonist. So the protagonist that, is, that, that belongs to such a remote past, which is, uh, you know, uh, when the universe just comes into being has to have a name which allies with the time that he is representing everything in its most fundamental in its most primary form right i'm sure that this is very interesting already and um, you would love to know how all of this you know then is uh, uh, kind of uh, translated into the actual text that he writes then um, if you notice the subject matter um, of uh, uh, this text can be uh, divided into four main strands. Now you see if you, if you uh, uh, look at the book, it has four parts, right? And uh, those four parts uh, has a certain set of short stories. The first part is connected to the moon. The second is connected to the sun stars and galaxies. The third is to do with the earth and the fourth is to do with evolution and time. Again, all four, um, you know, uh, themes are what? Cosmic themes connected with the cosmos, connected with the universe, the galaxy and the life over there, right? So, for instance, the first uh, 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 story is called as the distance from the moon which is a love story. You must read it. It's a love story, uh, but written in uh, the cosmic terms. Very, very interesting. So that's what makes this writer very engaging also because of the freshness that he brings um, in his works, right? So we notice that uh, all these, uh, you know, kind of uh, four categories 
uh, form the subject matter of this text uh, you know in the fiction so what we have seen uh, in this uh, uh, you know uh, lecture first we have noticed uh, the uh, the the uh, uh, background of the author his literary background as well so he's an italian he's a 20th century writer who was also a journalist um, he was writing around the time of the second world war uh, he was in fact also part or uh, you know uh, was uh, somewhat engaged in the political activity at that point of time he also joined the uh, uh, you know uh, the communist party he read anti fascist texts and he also wrote you know uh, fiction which uh, captured his war experiences right the next thing that we said was that he is a writer who is incredibly experimental right experimental in what sense that he uh, uh, experimented with different genres as a take away or as a or as a, a take off from um, uh, realist fiction and some of the experiments include uh, writing uh, you know uh, including metafictional elements in the text writing historical fantasy and now even writing a text of uh, you know uh, which is completely based on the cosmos and in fact which uh, inaugurates a new genre in itself right and there uh, thereafter we looked at uh, uh, you know at some length this collection which is in discussion today that is the cosmic comics written in 1965 what are its salient features and what are, what is the subject matter and where is all of this coming from why does he choose science as a take off point for experimenting with realist fiction now in the next part of the lecture we will take up a story from this collection and discuss it at length thank you